Oh hello Dragonfly Swarm! Genshin Impact has no shortage of characters, especially not nowadays, but there's always been a select few that sit at the top of most tier lists for their absurd strength and versatility, and of those, some of the strongest support units such as Bennett, Kazuha, Zhongli, Yelan, etc. feel not only very powerful, but it also feels like there's a pressure of almost every team in the game wanting them. And because of this, many other very capable supports have had their spotlight shadowed, most notably the very underrated 2.0 era supports Goro, Sara, Yunjin, and Shinha. These Characters have all shared similar backlash for being exceptionally situational, and yet they also grew on the community over time as we discovered their true value, in that they're all very, very good at acting as supports for a small portion of team styles within their niche. In other words, they're specialist supports, and in this video, I'm gonna explain why that makes them meta breakers and why these types of characters are so important to the game as a whole. But disclaimer, I, I've made a meta breakers video before, and I think some people assumed that I meant these characters are the best in the game, meta breakers, but that's not what I meant. The term meta breakers means defying the meta as in the character is not playing by the rules of the game's most powerful teams and yet is still performing exceptionally well within their own rights. So uh, yeah. Anyways, let's start by talking about the ever powerful Shinha. As a dedicated cryo support, Shinha was introduced in 2.4 as one of the first characters ever to have this new type of buff, the confusing flat damage buff. Shinha's elemental skill essentially allows her to grant every member of her team a couple of stacks of icy quills which will trigger any time a teammate deals cryo damage. And the way it works is that it adds a flat damage bonus to the cryo damage based on Shinha's attack, and that bonus can be multiplied by the character's other damage bonuses, like cryo damage, crit damage, and things like that. Thus, Shinha acts as a very powerful buffer for cryocentric teams and is rather mediocre in most other teams besides some physical teams and some melt teams. And naturally, this caused a bit of discourse when she came out because the idea of pulling for a 5 star support that would only work optimally in a very specific portion of the game's teams probably seemed uh, like a cash grab. But this discourse was quelled when players realized just how valuable she is, as the game's most powerful cryo buffer by quite a long shot, and she essentially opened up doors for previously weak teams such as Mono Cryo, which is especially notable when you consider fighting against enemies that can't be frozen. And in terms of her power as compared to the game's other premier buffers, take for example Kazuha, a Kazuha with 800 elemental mastery comes in roughly 21% behind your average Shinha as Ayaka's best buffer in a freeze team. So if you had to choose between one or the other, running Shinha with a different Iridescent Shredder would typically net considerably higher damage. And yes, this immense buffing power is technically confined to cryocentric teams, but Shinha enables quite a few otherwise mediocre teams so that you can make the most of the niche she dominates in. And she's doing all of this while allowing other highly contested buffers to be slotted into other teams, which can be very valuable for the majority of players running through the Spiral Abyss. It's a very important topic that you're gonna see me bring up frequently in this video, but part of Shinha's very high value is that she completely alleviates the pressure of needing other powerful and highly contested buffers on cryo teams, so you won't have to worry about not having a second Kazuha or a second Bennett or second Yelan or whoever because Shinha exists primarily to fill that spot better than any of those top tier buffers can inside of cryo teams. And that same logic, from a different angle, applies to our next character Yunjin. Yunjin's supportive capabilities function similarly to Shinha's in that she provides a flat damage buff to her teammates that can be multiplied alongside the character's base damage for potentially very large damage increases. And in fact, Yunjin's buff scales so well that she can become competitive with and even straight up stronger than Bennett in the right teams with high investment. So why is she not even a fraction as popular as Bennett then? <laughs> well, because her buff can only apply to normal attack damage, therefore she's confined to a niche selection of teams where the main DPS focuses on that kind of damage, so your prime candidates for Yunjin to support would be DPS characters like Yoimiya, Ayato, and situationally Hu Tao. But also basically any of the other physical DPS units among a few other characters can enjoy Yunjin as well. This also means that Yunjin plays most most competitively with characters who use their normal attacks for the vast majority of their damage, not just some of their damage. So no, she's not going to be as valuable as Bennett when paired with characters like Eula, Child, etc. Not at all because she's bad with them, but because their normal attacks are not typically the main focus of their damage output, or at least not enough to effectively apply the value of Yunjin's buffs. So in terms of being genuinely competitive as a buffer and having the ability to completely replace other top tier buffers, Yunjin currently only dominates a small portion of teams, most notably with Yoimiya teams, but she does so very effectively, and normal attack based users are not technically uncommon, so her potential versatility can really only increase with time as characters release more and more. I made an entire video discussing the actual math behind how much better she is than Bennett, which I will link below, but generally speaking, an equally invested C6 Yunjin will outperform a maxed out Bennett in some scenarios, making her, like Shinha, another very valuable unit for alleviating the pressures of having to slot Bennett into all of your teams. Yunjin is definitely in the weirdest spot right now, 
but ironically also poses one of the biggest threats to other buffers as a potentially highly contested unit because all she really needs is a few more normal attack based characters to help her dip into the actual meta. However, what about Miss Kujo Sara? Kujo Sara is taking a bit of a unique turn from Shinha and Yunjin's potential because technically speaking, she isn't really confined to any niche, and this is thanks to the fact that her buff applies similarly to how Bennett's does, granting a flat attack bonus based on her base attack to allies hit by her Tengu marks, making her potentially very, very versatile. But what sets her back though is that her buff is a bit impractical to pull off and it lasts for a very short time, pushing her into a niche role where her biggest value will come from buffing teams that can front load or snapshot their damage to make full use of her buffs. Not only that, but unlike every other buffer in this Meta Breakers video, and most other buffers in general, Sara herself actually contributes a lot of damage to her team with her burst, especially with constellations. So a typical Sara is a buffer that many teams could enjoy, but her high demand burst and very small buff window makes only a select few teams optimal for her, most of which, ironically, include electro-centered teams. Yep, much like how Shinha has cornered the market of cryocentric teams, Sara is just naturally a good fit on electro teams where she can easily be batteried and apply her buffs to characters like Beto, who can snapshot the buff, or Raiden, who can front load a significant amount of her damage inside the buff. But to further this dominance within the niche of electrocentric teams, Sara's C6 grants her the ability to buff her team's electro crit damage, which is actually precisely what makes her competitive as the game's best buffer for electro teams. Take for example this math regarding a C0 Raiden Shogun with an average free to play build. A C6 Bennett with his very best gear surprisingly performs 2.6% worse as her buffer than a similarly invested C6 Kujo Sara, making C6 Sara an exceptional replacement for Bennett and slash or other buffers on electrocentric teams, assuming you need those buffers in other teams. And although she still falls short of other buffers in teams that can't front load or snapshot all of their damage within her buff duration, she's still very potent in the teams that can, allowing her to dominate the area of Genshin that contains characters like Kuching, Beto, Raiden, etc., so that Bennett and the other high demand buffers don't have to. And falling in a somewhat similar boat as Sara and Shinha comes our last meta breaking support, Goro. I say similar boat because Goro holds a reputation as the game's best geocentric team buff by quite a large amount, which is a really surprising given that he was specifically designed to become stronger the more Geo units there are on his team. With the multiple utility buffs he provides as well as his very close synergy with Noel and Ito, Goro at low constellations performs only about 6% worse than a high investment Bennett, but at C6 with his considerable Geo crit damage buff, he shoots way up above Bennett and every other potential Geo buffer, making him the premier support for these kinds of teams. And because of his very cheap build options, Goro is pretty easy to apply to the field, and for the same reasons as why Kazuha is so friendly to build, Goro is as well. Neither of them really require you to level up their talents because the majority of their value comes from passives within their kits or within the talents themselves. Kazuha's being his notorious A4 elemental damage bonus passive, Goro's being the flat bonuses provided with his elemental skill passives, those of which technically being viable even at level 1. That's not to say you shouldn't level up Goro's skill though, especially when pairing him with defense scaling DPS units because the extra defense can provide a notable damage increase and will further solidify his value as a replacement for the game's other high demand support buffers. It is quite fair to say that Goro is the most niche of all of these buffers, as he really doesn't provide much value at all to any non-Geo units, and even within his Geo unit pool, he only provides maximum value to those that benefit from defense scaling. But to those that he does provide maximum value to, he has the potential to do it far better than any other support in the game. So the area in which he dominates, he dominates quite confidently. And so with all of this said about these four specialist supports, what exactly is the point of releasing so many of them, and why has Hoyoverse continued to do so despite despite the constant backlash from players complaining that they're weak or too niche and things like that. Well, think of it like this. When Genshin first came out, there were only so many characters that they could drop on release, so many of the supports from early Genshin, Bennett, Diona, even though Diona wasn't released, Sucrose, etc., had to be really good at a lot of different things to cover the game's needs for different supports for different scenarios, thus creating one of the most high demand supports in the game for his top tier buffing on top of his other added utility. And beyond that, every now and then Hoyoverse would release a new very powerful and versatile support that fell into grippingly high demand, such as Kazuha or Raiden and Yelan, even though lots of people see Raiden and Yelan more as DPS units than supports, but they still provide unbeatable offensive supportive utility. So in order to combat the demand of these units and create a balance and longevity within the game's environment, characters like Shinha, Yunjin, Sara, and Gora came out. These characters all confidently dominate their own fields of the game's teams, and they do so generally better than even the strongest aforementioned buffers because they're designed to. They're all generally inexpensive to build with very high impact when placed in the right teams, and as such, they alleviate a lot of the pressure of not having one or multiple of the game's premier supports, whether because you can't pull for them or because they're occupied on your second abyss team. And with good investment and high understanding of these four characters, their nature as specialist supports will propel them to 
to heights that not even characters like Kazuha or Bennett can reach on their own. Take for example the calculations I showed for each character. This creates a rewarding and fulfilling gameplay experience because if any of these supports fill the area of team building that you want to build into, say cryo teams or normal attack teams or electro teams or geo teams, there's a cheap and effective support option for each of these teams that you can comfortably dedicate to without worrying about needing them in other teams or needing your other high demand supports in those specific teams. So as we progress into Sumeru and beyond, my assumption is that we'll see quite a handful of these kinds of specialist supports releasing into the game and take over certain areas of the team building experience as their strongest in their field. And in that same right, my assumption is that this will alleviate a decent amount of the pressure of feeling like you have to pull for premier supports anytime they have a rate up. But that's technically speculation because I am not Hoyoverse. So yeah, build your specialist supports, they are good for your soul. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video or it helped you in any way, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing because it really helps my channel and I would be super grateful. Also follow me on Twitch because as this video is uploading, I'm streaming the long awaited 3.0 live stream reveal right now. Anyways, I gotta, uh, I gotta go and prepare for the Sino Shrine. The Sino community will rise!